Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Super Bowl in Canton, Michigan. Round two continues on here, or I should say gets underway as the event continues on. 2017 PWBA Greater Detroit Open. On behalf of our, our PWBA staff, tournament director, to Neil Milligan, Assistant Tournament Director, Kathy Watka, Tour Coordinator and Merchandise Manager, Kathy Kavicki, and our Brand Manager and Director of Digital Media, Jason Thomas. My name is Emil Williams, Jr. Thank you for tuning in extra frame. Kick off to game one here. Nicole Bauer, Shalyn Zukeepley, Megan McGinley, and Liz Johnson. Andrew Ramirez, Perea, Stephanie Martins, Daria Paiuk, and Jennifer Russo. Third for Paiuke on a double. Andrew Ramirez Perea. Out with an early three backer on 35 and 36. Angie shot buck 60 the last game in round one, but doesn't take away from what she did earlier. She is tied for six, plus 131. Your leader is Verity Crawley. From England at plus 182. Liz Johnson about to step up on 34 is in fourth place. Crawley at plus 182, Josie Barnes in second at plus 177, C.T. Rockman at in third at plus 176, Elias Johnson fourth at plus 141, Jen Higgins in fifth at plus 136, a tie for sixth, Sandra Gongora and Ramirez Perea at plus 131, Deandra Athbady in the top 10 is in eighth at plus 129. Maria Jose Rodriguez is ninth at plus 125. And Diana Zavialova is in 10th at plus 102. 32nd is Daria Paiu at plus 24.
right after a couple of opens for Liz Johnson. Couple strikes here, strike or two strikes sandwiched in between the couple of opens. Shaolin, ten pin. Keithley, Nicole Bauer on a double. All right, Ramirez. All right, some favorable carry here early on. And he's thrown it well, looking to again, get into the cashers round. To our left, Shannon O'Keefe, Johanna Puentes, Cassandra Leithold, and Katie Zwiefelhoff, who has had some pretty good events so far here on, on tour 4 Zulkeefley. To our right, uh, let's see, we see Danielle McEwen, Julie Ochepik, Summer Jasmine, and Brittany Ferrara. Notre Dame College of Ohio. A couple Falcons, I believe, are here, at least two for sure. Both for the program. Of course, Brittany there and uh, Jerrica Heibel. takes care of business here. Shall in part of six bowler contingent this season from Malaysia. Liz Johnson trying to tie a record. Record for most consecutive TV appearances by qualifying or making TV this week and qualifying for the TV finals. players. Carolyn Doran Ballard did it twice. Carolyn Giannotti, Nikki Giannullius, excuse me, and uh, Lisa Wagner.
All right, high flush for Zoo Keepley. Miss Johnson here struggling. Miss some multi pin conversions here. Which is very odd to see from Liz. So 64 through the fifth. Four, six, seven. Bucket, Angie Ramirez Perea. McEwen has gotten off to a pretty good start here in game one of round two, which is essentially game seven overall. Hayuk after the early open. Got him back on track. Martinez trying to find a double at some point. And for Russo. Five, nine counts so far this game. Ewan's got a chance to shoot 269. Just a couple pairs away. Paiute playing 
little to the right. Here to begin things on the fresh. No re-oil, or excuse me, no burn squad, I should say. There was a re-oil. Pattern this week, 39 feet, 25.1 milliliters. Hewen went nine spare in the ninth, nine spare in the tenth. She's on a fill shot. She can shoot 237 to give you that update. Ball change for Liz and 310. It's not looking comfortable here, needless to say, in game number one. So Keefley has been around the pocket the entire game. Sandra Lutho to our left. She can get in the 250s with a double in the tenth. Ramirez Perea. Is clean after a couple of tough frames. Megan McGinley up looking for a double here shortly. And a break for Paiute. Gets the 10 out. Good spare. Speaking of a double, she did double. Oh, Liz, the chat with Dell Ballard Jr. Oh, Team Storm. Fifth nine count. All right, let's get some help. Cole, ball clipped the 10 pin. Or excuse me, the nine. It just touched it, but it did not go over. Well, McEwen shot 237. Julie Ochepik on the same pair shot 252. Zul Keefley. Right, he's gonna need a little work in the 10th, but she can get to, into the two O's. Man, 
and a two way for Bauer. Shannon Pluhowski. She's got three in a row, including two in the 10th. She can shoot 186. All right, 198 for Martins, 202 for Paiute, 207 for Ramirez, 174 for Jin Russo.
All right, folks, we're on to game number two. Sorry about that. Had to make sure some people were okay. So, Bree McPherson. Asha Kovalova, Alyssa Estep, and Shannon Pluhowski. Marissa Thomas, Miranda Panas. Tanya Raumemper and Carolyn Doran Ballard. Beyond 33 and 34 here, game number two. Game three, hope to have uh, Nicholas Pate join us. That's his thoughts and insights. Very bright and talented young man from a very talented bowling family. Men's Intercollegiate Singles Championship. He helped Midland run our finish a couple years ago. Just finished up at Midland University. He'll join us. He has uh, been watching, of course, several friends here in attendance. Here's Marissa Thomas. Haven't seen her since the USBC Queens a few weeks ago, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where she was the final qualifier. Qualified fifth, finished fifth. Not a bad game. I'm pretty sure 212. But Sherry Tan shot 289 against her. That was ultimately, of course, the difference in that game. Sherry had the front 10 and uh, threw a very good shot on the 11th. But Marissa Thomas, meanwhile, was part of the, the old fatal four-way, if you will. Got four competitors in the elimination final match where three players with the Highest three game totals will move on to TV essentially. She had to make a 310. A 310 to qualify for television. So some clutch spare shooting down the stretch to make her TV debut. Well, a pretty cool week for her, obviously. Pretty cool night to watch her succeed and even better. See watcher on TV. Four six here for Pluhowski Rob Imper. Tanya made her TV debut last year here at the Greater Detroit Open, qualifying for the TV finals. Game three, in round two, we will see a 
Amanda Green, Nicole DePaul Miller, Tara Quinlan, and Rachel Cerrone. On 35 and 36, we'll have Shinoa Rhodes, Shinadal Hamidi, Rocio Restrepo, and Verity Crawley. And we'll see Verity. Actually, we'll see that cross for the first time today. All right, nice shot there from McPherson. Spare for Pluhowski. Appreciate everyone tuning in. Feel free to drop a comment. The live now posts. is Carolyn Doran Ballard. Had a little brief convo about uh, the greatest player of all time. And uh, Michael Savage pointed out Carolyn should be in that conversation and uh, could not agree more with that sentiment. Pocket 710. Of course, CDB, obviously, with 20 titles, USBC Hall of Famer. Made a TV show last year at the Rochester Open. It was such a cool moment for her to kind of be back on TV, but when it happened, it essentially double. The first one really locked it up, but it needed a good count on the second shot in the 10th. So right over to Husband Dell. Shared a 
Very nice moment. As someone who has certainly obviously watched the tour you know, prior to the hiatus, as everyone has here. Another great shot there from Bree. Can't help but want to see players like Carolyn Doran Ballard, Leanne Holsenberg. Of course, Liz Johnson continues you know, to provide excitement on television, as does Kelly Kulik. So we want to see players like that who have really paved the way for the next generation of what we see here, which, of course, is a future for the sport. trying to not only find the strike zone here, but I'm trying to find her way out here on the PWBA Tour. And we could say the same for everyone. Right? It's only a matter of time, and it really is. It's the truth. We know Dasha Kovalova at some point will make a TV show. Tanya Raumemper made her first again here in Detroit last year. It will not be her last. Talked about Daria Paiute, for example, and continuing to gain the experience during our conversation earlier today. Only in the books, their first strike of the game. Hello to Tiffany Pluhowski, who is always watching. She is indeed. Some of the veterans paving the way. Someone like Cheryl Daniels just posted a video of on PWBA Facebook page. Cheryl, of course, the USBC Hall of Famer competing this week in her native Detroit area. Ten titles for Cheryl on the 95 U.S. Women's Open. She's in 18th. And a pretty good block. If she can repeat that success, she'll be on to extended play tomorrow. Tanya, S step. PBA 
wash out. Marissa Thomas well, playing the lane similar to what and how she played them at the Queens. All right, let's take a look at some standings. So we are about halfway through game number two. New leader in the clubhouse, it is Josie Barnes from Nashville, plus 221. First player to eclipse the 200 over par mark. Very good shot there for Miranda. Nice double. We're on 34. Verity Crawley is second at plus 194. Sandra Gungora is tied for third with C.T. Rockman at plus 154. Cassandra Luthold and Angie ramirez Perea are tied for fifth, plus 138. Diana Zavialova is seventh at plus 127. Jen Higgins is eighth at plus 120. Shai Donald Hamidi is ninth at plus 115. Tanya Raumemper is 10th at plus 111. Looking for extended play is Linda Barnes. She is 11th at plus 104. Johnson is 12th after tough opening 158 game. Certainly a big contrast to how she opened uh, up and up round one. She shot 278 this afternoon in game one. Tonight, 158 out of the gate. She drops to plus 99. Cheryl Daniels just talked about her from West Bloomfield, Michigan. USBC Hall of Famer. Three USBC Hall of Famers, 11th, 12th, and 13th. Barnes, Johnson, and Daniels. Cheryl at plus 97. Julie Ochepik tied for 14th with Karen Marcano, plus 94. Brittany Himmelreich tied for 16th with Deandra Asbady, plus 91. A lot of ties here in the top 32 after one here in the second round. Messenger, yep. Make it four in a row for SP. Ooh. That's a nice shot there from CDB.
continuing on with our standings. taking a look at the area behind 35 and 36. Not sure if there was spot there, carpet, moist, or whatever the case was, but everyone checking their footing. Especially Shannon. Shannon had, had the wire brush out, just going to town on her sole combination. All right, McPherson gets a break. All right, here's Puhowski. Does she have five in her? Yep. I got five on it. Some people may know that song, some may not. It also may not be for everyone, so just almost like a, uh, that's a warning, so to speak. If you're interested, I encourage you to check it out. Google and YouTube are pretty cool tools these days. That's essentially the name of the song. Might be my new thing when I, hit, when I see five in a row. We'll see. It depends because I'm kind of forgetful, so I easily could forget. All right, Bree, trying to just kind of get under control a little bit here. Guttered and then pulled one, made the spare. Pulled down with that one. Again, as well, just trying to kind of get back into rhythm. Certainly easy to do when you do throw one in the channel. Obviously, <laughs> you want to do everything you can and not do it again. Kovalova, that went three in a row. And Alyssa, I was high in the 10th frame. Doran Ballard with five in a row. I missed her opportunity there, so no songs for six. All right, half a dozen for CDB. Let's see where Carolyn Doran Ballard is in the standings. She is 25th at plus 59. Giselle Poss threatening for some extended play here. 
Awesome. Recently of Vanderbilt University. She's in a tie for 31st with Shalyn Zulkifli at plus 29. Summer Jasmine, Katie Ann Sop Schroeder, Sierra Khan and Moto, Restrepo, Liana Franco. Mitchin Pulhowski, Brittany Smith, Nicole Trudell, Kayla Bandy, Natasha Roslin, and Brandy Remy. Local player is Brandy. Right now in the Cashers round as well. Marissa Thomas. She's got herself a double. Shannon, nine spared a tenth. And she can get to 225. change for Puhowski. Boy, that looked pretty good. Rob Gacho gives the thumbs up. All right, CVB. Looking like it's 2001. Looks dead locked in. Kovalova. Five in a row for da Dasha. How about six? She will get it. Dasha can get the rare 220 game with not a spare in sight. Two early splits, 8-1 in the fourth. And strikes everywhere else. Wow, almost a 7-9 there on a heck of a shot. from the Ukraine, Wichita State Shocker, of course, an alum, from a player of the year, most valuable player. Again, talked about it at the, the early portion of this game. At some point, it's all gonna come together for Dasha, but every week we see the signs. Shoots 203. And the Greek church there on the end. Well, that breeze game was 
so much better than 173. Do some really good shots. But that is our sport right there in a, in a nutshell in some cases. Lane condition this week. 39 feet in 39 feet, 25.1 milliliters of oil. CDB, 2001. First one in the 10th is a good one. Miranda Panis quietly just doing her thing here. Double, she can get into, uh, well, good count. First of all, a double and good count might get her 210, but that helps. Uh, she can get at uh, 214. If you're interested in the lane condition, you can check the graph. Best way to do it, pwba.com slash live. Everything you need is there. Rosters, pairings, the lane graph. Of course, your results qualifying round one and round two. 2001. Carolyn still with so many fans across the world, not just the country, across the world. And of course, a standout player on the PWBA tour for so long. She's a person that, you know, in any situation, you just can't really help but root for her. Because of what she has done and meant to the sport of bowling and specifically women's bowling. And she's a great person. Thomas 212, Bob Lemper 203, 200 even for Miranda Panis, and CDB. Might pick up a new ball here to try on the fill shot. Take some time and then kind of that patent it, get down into a good knee bend position. Pulled it a little bit, but it's okay. Very nice game for CDB. 278 for the Hall of Famer. That's a good way to end game two, I would say, right? So we'll move on to game number three. Good cross coming up here. Shai Donald Hamidi, Verity Crawley, Shinoa Rhodes, Rocio Restrepo. We'll have a very brief break in the action here as we wait for our players to make the turn of course this is a 60 lane center some of the media coverage we have received so far here. Detroit uh, Free Press. Detroit News is here currently. Again, lane condition. Thirty nine feet, thirty nine feet, twenty five point one milliliters of oil. It was a 
Kegel curve this week. Again, check it out, pwba.com slash live. Nicole DePaul Miller, Amanda Green, Rachel Cerrone, and Tara Quinlan. All right, looks like everyone has uh, just about gotten to where they want to be or where they should be, of course, for game three. And as I mentioned to you earlier, we will be joined in game three by a special guest. That guest is here. He is the 2017 Intercollegiate Singles Champion, a very talented player who comes from a very talented bowling family. We will ask him if he is the most talented in his family mo momentarily. None other than Nick Pate. Sir, how are you? Oh, I'm great. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me in the booth. It's really a good time. Nick is here. He made the drive with his roommate Aaron McCarthy. So obviously you've been watching some bowling throughout the day. Uh, what have you seen from round one? Because we always sometimes see some differences, and you've been bowling for quite a while that you may notice a difference from you know round one to round two. What have you seen so far here from the from the ladies? Um, I definitely have seen that this block it looks a little softer than this morning. I also saw last block that. The front, this building looks like the front's just hooked super early, so it creates tightness down lane. So you get the early hooking, and then you throw a good shot and it two pins. And I think it's because it hooked so early here. Are those things, are those things that you, as a as a player, like how soon do you notice something like that when you're at this level, when you're that in tune, of course, into your own game? How, how quick is it that that type of uh, notification in your in your brain? Well, I actually just realized this. Um, usually, people say that they can see better from back here, but I I see it better when I'm actually bowling. I see that the fronts are hooking early. Every now, it's hard to see the first 20 feet yourself. But after spectating today, I had a hard time seeing it until I was conversing with someone about it. And then it said, oh, it made sense. But as a player, I see it quicker than when I'm watching. So you're saying that you will not be a coach? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I can be down in like the set T area, okay. then, then, I, then I can do it. Was it, that something you would want to do at some point? Just, you know, wh whatever level it is, but the, the aspect of coaching. Yeah, I, I think I could be a decent coach. At least lane play-wise, but 
I'm not very, I'll admit, I'm not very knowledgeable when it comes to pro shop stuff. Nothing wrong with that. No. I don't, I don't think, uh, you know, no one, no one's going to not take your resume because, <laughs> <laughs> because, <I hope> not. <laughs> you know, you may not know one or two items inside the pro shop. I'm always willing to learn, though. Definitely willing to learn about that. Well, you still got plenty of time, so yeah. don't, don't forget about that. All right, joined in the booth by Nick Pate. We are watching Nicole DePaul Miller, Amanda Green, Rachel Cerrone, and Tara Quinlan. looking at Verity Crawley. Verity was the round one leader. Of course, uh, always just a stout physical game. Really, uh, you know, we can say certainly coming into her own very early still in her PWBA career, but uh, she's kind of that front runner early for rookie of the year. We can all see why, essentially. Yeah, she throws it fantastic. I had, I think I bowled two or three years collegiately just watching her. So. Yeah, she's she's definitely very good. Anything that you see, and obviously you bowl with her, you've seen her a lot collegiately. Um, anything that stands out for you that says, "Wow, she really does this well." It's not because you know this thing is not why she's so good, but you know, for you, what do you notice? Uh, the first thing is the rev rate, obviously. If you're a female and you have rev rate, you have an advantage over the other ones. Um, but the other one is probably consistency. She's able to repeat shots, and that's why she made a TV show, I believe, earlier this year. Yep, made the uh, Found Valley Open, which will air uh, Tuesday, actually, okay. at 8 p.m. Eastern. So be sure, folks, to watch that set your DVRs. Yeah. That's called a nice segue and a good tease from Mr. Yeah. Pate. <laughs> Someone who's made a show this year is Rocio Restrepo. In fact, she's made two. She made the first two of the season, won the first for her third career title. Yeah, she's definitely very good. I think I was in attendance for one of her shows. Rocio is the defending champion here at this event, at the Greater Detroit Open. Last year, she defeated Lee Jane Sin, who bowling pretty well. Not as well so far as her team Malaysia teammate, yeah. C.T. Rockman, who is near the top of the leaderboard. But every week, it's uh, it's fun to watch because you don't know what's going to happen. That's no. the first thing, right? No. And we can't really predict it because, well, except for Liz Johnson, <laughs> who is just doing all kinds of great things yeah. that we've talked about before, but you just don't really know because there's so many great players. I mean, it's oh yeah, so cool. Else, yeah. What a spare. And they do things like that. Yeah. They pick up splits like that, and it looks like a five-pin spare. <laughs> <for them. laughs> yeah, their their spare games are. Uh, and it, it, I mean, you won't expect really anything less at, at this level. No. Missing single pins are, are kind of rarities for a lot of players out here for sure. So we look at Crawley. Another good shot for Verity. Keeping it in play, keeping it in the 1-3. I think she 10 pin, which obviously is a good lead. Throwing a rolly ball, looks like a Tyrant Pearl. Something that hooks and then stops, which is kind of what you want. Shaidal Hamidi striking in the third. Shaidal from Malaysia. She made a TV show last year uh, in emphatic fashion, actually, to even qualify for it. Shot 300 in the group step ladder final to advance the TV at the Wichita Open. Yeah, I remember that. 
Those players you throw, they, they throw it so well. It's, it's all so simple. It's, um, they've got uh, six bowlers for four events this year. Last year they had eight. Eight bowlers, that is, as Restrepo strikes. But uh, Lee Jane Sin, back-to-back uh, -back weeks, she claimed the number one yeah. seed. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Uh, C.T. Brockman is the number two seed for Wichita. Um, she will be in the running, it looks like, this week for television if all continues to, to fall the way they have so far. You know, every week we, 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 we don't know and we look forward to it. It's kind of like a the entry, if you will. we got a lot of guesses. Uh, the other thing, of course, that makes it interesting, obviously, is uh, this year's lane conditions haven't been – uh, easy to say the least at all and so I think uh, it's forced a lot of folks to be to hone in on that versatility how important is it to, to be versatile in this sport oh it takes I, it, it's a lot it's really good to be versatile really good especially with the person who's creating these patterns I enjoy Nick Hoglu patterns I, I don't know it's just a true grind and those who keep it, give it a chance, they seem to come out on top. And being in college, it, that's all we bowled on, his kind of patterns. Good shot at the 6, 7, 10 there from Nicole DePaul Miller, first open. Shnoah Rose, former collegiate player. The early spares around us. We've got Karen Marcano, Brooke Bauer, Brianna Andrew, and Brianna Cote, a pair to our left. Brandy Branca, Jacqueline Meldrum, Nicole Trudell, and Jolie O'Grady to our right. And even farther down, we have my roommate, Aaron. One more pair. There is Aaron McCarthy. Yeah. Spell all this, this, this block. Four in a row. For Aaron, spare four bagger. Shot 230, 2-0, first two games. Okay. Yeah. What What did you see uh, maybe in comparison to the first block from Aaron so far? Um, honestly, this, it looked like she was trying to place the ball. She was trying to be too careful, but now it looks like she's aggressive and she's – Staying on top of it. She told me before she was going to start, she's like, I'm just going to take a step left and not try and play straight. And I said, do it. I mean, that's your A game. Uh, seven pin. All right, no love on the seven pin for Aaron McCarthy. Speaking of standings, let's see if uh, we've got an update here. My other friend, Josie, she's going really well. Now he's just now he's just name dropping folks. But I did tell the folks that you had a lot of friends who were who were bowling, so you would be well qualified to chat about their respective games. Well I'm I'm staying with both of them, so I Well there you have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure we keep it light for them. Just yeah. in case, you know, we don't want any angry messages to, to Nick. <laughs> we don't want him to not have a place to sleep this yeah. evening. All right, this is game number, what game is this, Nick? Uh, so this would be eight, this is nine. I ask this question every every week because at some point during the day, I just <laughs> kind of don't remember. Uh, this is game three of this round, so you are right. All right, so eight game update. It is Josie Ernest Barnes at plus 215. Again, plus 215, Verity Crawley right behind her. Six pins. Behind Josie at plus 209. And a late trip on the four for Restrepo. She has a double. A couple ties. Well, we continue to see some ties here in the top 32. Tie for third, plus 185. Andrew ramirez Perret and Jen Higgins. City Rockman is in fifth at plus 169. Cassandra Lutho is sixth at plus 165. Diana Zavialova. Plus 151 in seventh. Saw Carol and Doran Ballard shoot 278. That has bolted her all the way to a tie for eighth place at plus 137 with Deandra Asbady and Sandra Gungora. 
that is essentially your top 10. Right now, your cut to the cashers round is plus 31. The Sydney Brummett, Kelly Kulik at the moment. 107 bowlers this week. Again, you can get down to 36th place to go ahead and cash here at the Greater Detroit Open. And that cut right now is plus 21. So if you want to make money, be in 36 or above. If you want to bowl tomorrow, be in 32nd or above. I said after Friday's practice, cut was going to be plus 30. Was that the number you came up with finally after the, yeah, after that? Okay. I said plus 30. It's pretty good. Pretty okay. good guess at the moment. I don't know how. It depends how these last four turn out. They got a little tricky towards the end, first block. They got a little tighter. I think scores dropped. I think the cut dropped five pins or something. There seems to be, you know, in a, in a six game block, at some point, generally, there's always some kind of, uh, there's always transition, but more a defined transition where kind of everyone hits it at some point. Yeah. All right, Miller. We had one of those instances at Jonesboro. I was watching the B squad was with the open there and cut drop 15 pins in one game. And it, I was out of it by a lot, but that 15 pins gave me a little hope going into it. I missed it by like 11 or something. But it seemed like everyone hit the transition that game. How many uh, tour events have you bowled so far or and or do you plan to bowl? Well, I'm still a non-member, so okay. I've bowled two. I bowled Jonesboro and Lubbock. I cashed in Lubbock, so I can only cash in one more PBA event before I have to stop. But luckily they do calendar here, so I think the plan is to get the card after team trials in January. First team trials was uh, obviously a very important event for you this year, or I guess uh, yeah, this year. Which man, January was so long ago at at, <laughs> at this point, yeah. at this point. Uh, but uh, making Team USA is something I know that was a goal of yours yeah. uh, to represent uh, your country, especially uh, on the you know the adult team. What did that moment mean to you and? You know, just for uh, the viewers, obviously, you know, no matter what the event is, but being able to represent one's country is a, just in a different aspect. Uh, what what did that moment mean for you personally? It's, it's one of the greatest feelings because I look at it as I am one of 14 people that represents the United States for bowling. I think we have 14 on the team, so I'm one of them. So putting that in perspective is – difficult but yeah that's that's me that I'm one of the 14 so I I'm extremely I stay humble about it I just yeah that's all I can say it leaves me speechless just thinking about it sometimes what about the the, the point of just achieving the goal that, that you set for yourself I mean that in itself um, you know had to be you know had to make you feel that not only kind of an amazing feeling, which, which of course it did, but you know, everyone sets goals. We don't always achieve them, but you were able to achieve that. What was that like? Um, just another good feeling. It, uh, it's a stepping stone. It was I can achieve now a higher goal, like maybe bowling well enough to get to the opportunity to travel for Team USA. I mean, I'm I'm happy to be on it as a selection or whatever. Sure just happy to be on it but to be able to be selected to travel would be another goal and that means obviously putting in the time the work and all the fun stuff it was an even better experience because my sister made it as well so kind of left my brother out of it I think uh, does he have any plans to bowl 
your team your shape trump at some point that's something he wants to do oh yeah he actually bowled this year he did okay all, we've all bowled for the last three four oh, years nice. yeah for those of you don't, who don't know uh folks nick pate has two siblings he mentioned his sister and his brother his sister lauren uh bowls collegiately for mckendry who had a dynamite year, of course, as well as a team winning the NCAA championship and the uh, intercollegiate team championship, both on the women's side. And his brother, Josh, goes for Wisconsin Whitewater, who also had their highest finish at intercollegiate uh, team championships this season, uh, finishing in towards tie for third. Lauren and Josh are twins. Yep. Lauren's older by a minute. 60 seconds. Yep. Does she let him know that all the time? Uh, when they Back were younger. The <laughs> when they were younger. Not so much now. Looks like Verity got a handful of that one. All right, nine pin for Verity. Just about through six frames on 35 and 36. Amanda Green trying to get something started here. She leaves a 10 pin on a three backer. See where Amanda is and the standings currently. Minus 59, so some work to do, but can get there. She certainly can do it, has the game to do it. Oh, yeah. Picks this up and strikes out for 240, 230. Pins here, they just they just seem weird. They seem just they don't want to fall. Like messengers are hard to come by, and when you come light, the seven is always a trick to fall. You need three or four pins to hit it. Not a lot of roll twos. If you were to compete on this on this pattern, and we talked about it, you have been watching, of course. Uh, and then seeing some things that you may adjust to as the day has gone on. Would you play them similar? Um, you know, kind of attack in kind of similar zones to where you've seen some of the players play today? Probably. Honestly, I'd probably start out with urethane because I think urethane might be in play for the ladies that have higher revs. That's what I've noticed. But no one's really tried it because actually, they actually have hook on this pattern, unlike the other ones. So. Sure. But yeah, I would probably start with a higher symmetrical bowling ball and try to stay up the back, let it stop rather than keep going. Dreaded 7-10. There's been a lot of those this weekend. Pocket 7-10. Saw another one earlier on our previous game on 35 and 36. Quick update to uh, Aaron McCarthy. 186 in the eighth. Spare in the ninth can get to 236. Big boost. Yeah, speaking of 710s, my uh, my Lucy partner, she left five in the first block. Brady Smith, a five in the first block, and it was two or three in the first game. And she wow. still shot 193. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so six strikes, seven. It was six or seven. Yeah. <laughs> Take the count. Jared Quinlan and trying to put together a block here. So minus 103, 180, 189, or excuse me, 180, 169 to start here. And 240 would not be bad at all. And Raleigh with a cave in of 410. Well, we, shall, we saw. Uh, Get it. Whoa. Boom. We'll take that. Nice shot there for Quinlan. Eric got the first one of the 10th. It's 220. She's on a mission. I think she's tired of uh, cheerleading for Josie. She's going she's gonna to do something about it this week. I told her it was her weekend to make the show. 
and Aaron, obviously, uberly really talented. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, really let people know. I remember she was still bowling at Midland <laughs> and the show she put on there at, yeah. uh, at ITC's. I mean, she was just like, just like, just wasn't missing at yeah. all. I've heard stories. I was still a youngin'. I think I was still in high school. I let her know about it. High school. Yeah. Oh, what an eight pin there from Restrepo. Man, I feel old now. <laughs> um, but, uh, and of course, she bowled so well at the Queens a couple of years back. The top seed there. She went through the nose. Left a split. So, I mean, it's just a matter of time. Oh, yeah. No, earlier in the year, she was battling a uh, uh, weird injury. So, my shot by Verity. That was right before the Queens. Yeah, it was her. I think it was her back. Cerrone is clean through nine as well. For the most part, pretty solid pair and cross here in game number three, and round number two, as Restrepo attacks the eight pin. Tough break there for Rowe, especially in the eighth frame, looking for more. We saw Carolyn Dorn Ballard take uh, 280 essentially to the final shot. Ended up shooting 278. That's pretty good. Looked like 2001. Carolyn Dorn Ballard, which <laughs> I can't say, say you were in high school because I, you weren't. I, I was seven. <laughs> it's okay. Ask, ask your parents. I know. <laughs> I know they know. <laughs> Pocket 7-10 broken down. Pretty good shot though for yeah. Tara. Picked it up, still shoots 220. Big game by Sabrina Divis. She used to bowl for Midland. She did. I bowled with her for three years. What, so what's going on at Midland? I mean, like did anyone kind of break down the history for you since you've been there? Like how did, how did they even the program get started? Well, there was a, uh, they were going to start a program in Blair, Nebraska, and that's about 20 miles, I think it's east, northeast of Fremont, which is where Midland is now. But then that program folded. It never got started. It folded before it could even start. So then Midland took in all those athletes that were going to Dana, and thus Midland had the bowling team. And I think this, that was eight years ago, I want to say. So I can say that I've been there for half the, half the life of Midland bowling. Well, I'll tell you, it, it, it didn't take too long to, you know, kind of, hey, get a program going, yeah. but but a, a good one and yeah. one that looks like it could kind of sustain the success level as yeah. well. We have a couple of good guy recruits coming in. They're also young. It was me and Casey. We were the old guys on the team. Now we're gone. Now it's just, I think the oldest one's a junior. Two juniors. That's, you know, it, it always, it's never good um, as the senior where, you know, when it's only one or two. And, yeah. Uh, but it's it's great essentially overall for the program because of the underclassmen that are, are, that are currently there. And also it forces them to, I don't want to say this in a bad way, to grow up quicker and to, to understand, like, these guys aren't going to be here next year. Maybe. Sure. we got to step up, mature up, and, you know, lead the way when they're gone. Back-to-back -back nine spares for Restrepo. We need to costly to miss there in the 10th from well, Cerrone open frame, shoots 194 over Paul Miller. She spares this, strike will give her 219. Rihanna Cote has found the, the strike gene. She can shoot 228 on the field shot. Karen Marcano to our left. That's a big double in the 10th. 
Good count put her in the two O's. Score seem a little higher this second set. I don't think they hooked as hard off the spot as what this morning did. Pin for Shai Donald. It's a pretty good scores across the good spectrum here, as Nick alluded to. One more, and Quinlan can get into into the two twenties. Seven pin for Verity. Good shot. Spare and shoot 190. Coming up next on 33 and 34 Chelsea Barr, Sierra Kanemoto, Kayla Pashina, and USBC Hall of Famer Cheryl Daniels. Everyone's okay. Yeah. Or perhaps a little frustration being expressed yeah. in a good way. Yeah. On uh, 35 and 36, we'll have Brittany Smith, Haley Lundy from Canada, Lee Jane Sin, and Missy Parkin. First time we'll see that group today. A shot there from Amanda Green. One more. Good position. Meaty 202. 219 for Nicole to Paul Miller. 220 for Tara. That's pretty good. Pretty good shots there in the 10th frame for Tara. I think that was a pretty good game overall. She's just solid at the line. Every shot. It's just. Yeah, I don't recall really seeing her ever fall off a shot. Yeah. One of the things you can see with Verity's ball is we watch Amanda Green. Oh, a shot there. It's a big triple for Verity. I, I, I feel that you can see every phase of the hook, roll, stop motion with her. Oh, yeah. That's because, and I don't know, maybe it's because she posts a shot, but because of that. Yeah. Then you just watch the ball path, yeah. and you can see it literally do every single one of those phases. Pretty cool to, to just kind of think about and just watch it. Rhodes with a 10-pin left prior to her fill. Here's Restrepo. She's fun to watch. Very intimidating when it comes to bowling. Think so? Yeah, when it comes to when it's bowling, but she's really nice. She'll she'll talk to you. She is great off the lanes. Yeah, she well, is. she's great on the lanes too, obviously. Yeah. But uh, I watched the pro am the other night. And she's very interactive with the fans and. When, when uh, we didn't see her in Wichita, well, we did, but she didn't make. Uh, Cash around a rare miss for for Roe, but so of course last week she's back, and you instantly know that you, you miss Rocio because she has a yeah. she has a very Rocio way of um gonna post shot to Rocio is yeah. what I like to call it, and you know the more you watch players, the more you anticipate certain reactions in certain situations. Yeah. It's all working for this game. Again, the two, she's in the 240s. Of course, the eight pin in the eighth. Got what she left in the ninth, and she could be looking at 280. 2810 on the field, but no worries. Plus 45 is always good. 
I'll take that score. Yeah. And so will she. And well, that'll do it for game number three. That went by pretty quick. Yeah. You got one more in you? Uh, I could go the last last <laughs> three if you want. <laughs> we definitely got one more. I know Brittany Smith is on the way. Yeah. We'll take a look at Brittany, another rookie of the year candidate. And my Lucy partner. And his uh, Lucy partner, of course. Been familiar with the Lucy. That is the PBA, PWBA striking uh, against breast cancer mixed doubles event on the PWBA schedule. That will take place in Houston uh, late July, right, uh, just prior to the U.S. Women's Open. That will be right here, of course, on Extra Frame as well. It's such a fun tournament. It, and it's for a great cause. They raise so much money there. I've got to uh, want to try to check it out if I can. And just make the trip and. Yeah, even if you're not bowling, yeah. just being in that atmosphere is just. It's awesome because they do a bunch of door prizes like they give away like I think it was like two TVs like 55 inches did you win one no I didn't I think one of them was like Bill O'Neill wanted or something oh, come on yeah come on Bill <laughs> I could be wrong you gotta get that TV to somebody else yeah I uh Brittany and I did win a hundred it was two hundred bucks so a hundred dollars each in a drawing nice they did like ten or twelve random drawings for two hundred bucks okay so is this for the just the players Yes, Those I, th I think I think so. Okay. Definitely excited to bowl with her again. Where did you guys finish? Um, minus sixty, and the cut was probably minus twenty or thirty. Okay. So you got that in the in the bag. We'll take care of it. Yeah. You, know, you got this. Yeah. She's not. She shot. I think it was two or three one twenties last year. Yeah, and we were. I mean, we knew each other, but we didn't know each other. So now that I've known her game, I can help her, and she can help me when needed. She's not gonna shoot one twenty this year. No, she's too good for that. <laughs> yeah. And I think she knows what to expect. And there's a change of venue, so I don't think that. That's true. The Copperfield Bowl. Yeah. For Brittany last year, you know, Detroit was cool for a lot of people. Hey, it was Rocio's first title. Uh, people got a chance to or get reacquainted essentially with Lee Jane Sin. They met her. Uh, she had made the Queen show last year, so they, they got an idea of who she was, and then she made another show, and then that kind of solidified and said, well, hey, she's pretty good, uh, which she is. Uh, but Brittany Smith finished ninth, or excuse me, tied for fifth last year. She just missed TV. She lost to Stephanie Johnson in the group step ladder mm -hmm. final. I think I was I was texting her. I was like, good job. I mean, that's that's impressive. And so if you if you're familiar with uh, you know co collegiate bowling, you knew she was the player of the year last year. Uh, and most valuable player, first team All American, and so you know the the results essentially not like totally unexpected, but when you when you actually see the person do it, and they come out and just get it done and get that close. Yeah, it's like well, there's no doubt that uh, at some point she's going to be on TV. Good opening shot there for Brittany. She wraps a ten pin. Brittany Smith, Daria Payun, Amanda Fry, Robin Rinslow, Verity Crawley. And really five very strong Rookie of the Year candidates yeah. this season. It's weird because those ladies are all relatively close to my age and times have, times have changed. Definitely a younger generation coming up. All right, Cheryl Daniels, uh, strike in the second. Do you know Cheryl Daniels? I do not. You know anything about Cheryl Daniels? No, but I, I believe you're about to tell me. I am. <laughs> <laughs> she is a USBC Hall of Famer. Okay. 
10-time titleist on the PWDA Tour on the 1995 U.S. Women's Open. Oh, make it Lee Jane Sin. Good run. A couple Hall of Fames in, uh, here locally. She's from the area. Okay. Um, but uh, so she bowls or, and, and has bowled the last few years, of course, that the, the tour has been back and specifically been in the Detroit area. And then also the kicker, the kicker, great singer. Oh. Great singer. I even had uh, a couple CDs to her credit, some background singing with uh, uh, some, some local uh, big-time groups actually in the area. It's definitely it's interesting. It's her lesson for, for yeah. the day. Well, her U.S. Open win, I was one when it happened. <laughs> well, it's important to uh, – Yeah. To provide this knowledge, I I always like going back and watching the old shows. Like they do the the PWBA vault every, I think it's like once a week or something. Yeah, we did that in the off season. Yeah, uh, I kind of that was kind of our throwback Thursday. Yeah, but we turned it into something else. Yeah. Which is cool. I I enjoy looking at that stuff because it's just interesting. Like I I YouTube like old PBA matches in like the 70s and 80s. 90s, early 2000s. Is it uh, when you do that, though, do you kind of pick up on something that maybe even you could apply to today's game, even though it's obviously you know, 40, 50 years old? Yeah, definitely. Uh, just watching how versatile, like, there's a couple shows where I, I'm a huge fan of Norm Duke. Like, okay. he's, he's been my idol. So, watch watching show after show on YouTube. He'll be at first arrow and then the next show it plays and he's at fifth arrow and he's doing the same thing and he's just he's just good. Norm would be someone you would definitely put in the versatile category. He beat me at the Masters to kick me out this year. Oh, I actually remember you telling me this now. That yeah. was, yes, that uh, we talked about this. He was throwing a pitch blue, which is a urethane ball, and he was... Which, oh, pesky nine pin, which is urethane, obviously, mm -hmm. and he was up two board. Wow. And I mean up two. He was schooling me. We were we were hitting the – honestly, we were hitting the pocket about the same amount, but he just has that touch. Hopefully I developed that touch when I'm a little bit older. I like how you can just – just honestly give the, the honest uh, account of what took place. Yeah. Like, that's serious. I mean, you know, like you not afraid to say, hey, Norm Duke just did what Norm Duke does, and, and I was there to witness it. Well, I shot 716 in that match. Like, I didn't pull bad. <laughs> and he shot 740. Like, Well, that's definitely not anything to no. be uh, ashamed of at I all. I think he was turning – he was turning 515 after two, and I was at 460. I actually had a chance to, to tie because he five count washout on the last shot. And I could have struck out for 279 to tie him. I'll tell you what, I mean, that's nothing wrong with that. That's, no. That was a good match, sounds like, obviously. and Yeah to bowl against Norm Duke, someone you've looked up to for a very long time, oh, yeah. and then to learn something essentially at the same time that maybe you can incorporate some point into your own game is even better. Well, I think he was a little mad from the first match he had because he had 800 shot against him, and he shot 17 and lost. Losing seven, so you seven, to, you 17. Norm Duke. Yeah. Okay. And he, yeah. Well, I'll tell you who else was mad apparently. And that's Deandra Asbady, because she is our new leader here at the Great oh, wow. Detroit Open at plus 235. So D, after opening round two with 162, goes 246 and then 298. Oh, wow. And somehow we, uh, well, it is 60 lanes sooner. Yeah. And we are kind of right in the middle. Maybe that's what that screaming was. Maybe, actually. Now that we think about that. I'm sure Jason Thomas... Got some uh, video of that. Josie Barnes is second at plus 232. 
Diana Zabialova tied with her good friend Verity Crawley at plus 204 for third. Jen Higgins is fifth at plus 203. Angie Ramirez Perea is sixth at plus 201. Cassandra Luthold is seventh at plus 177. Sandra Gungora is tied for eighth at one, or excuse me, plus 155. And C.T. Rockman, 10th at plus 152. Julie Ochepik, local player from the area as well, member of the tour. She is 11th at plus 134. Titania Raumemper made the show last year in Detroit, plus 127 and 12th. But Natasha Roslin from Malaysia has gotten it together as well. She shot 140 earlier. Oh, yeah, I did hear that. And round one and shot 297. Oh. And now 73 over here. And round number two, Brittany Himmelreich having a good day. She is plus 116. The aforementioned Cheryl Daniels is plus 109. And 15, Nicole Trudell, another talented young player with a sacred heart. Plus 106, Shai Dottle Hamidi is 17th at plus 103. Cut number right now is plus 51. That is Elise Bolton. Mary McCarthy is 31st at plus 52. Certainly making the charge as you mentioned. And she's got front three this game. Brittany Smith is 29th at plus 57. Local uh, amateur. Brandy Remy is 28th at plus 60. Well, this could be the week that um, where we see a few different faces potentially. Not only in our, obviously our cash is round, but potentially in match play and then moving forward to TV. Yeah. Well, I watched Deandra Asbady earlier today. She was near, I think she started on our feature pair. You, know, you can just kind of tell the way, the way players like to play. Oh, yeah. And, you know, she just kind of instantly matched up. And, you know, whether it was just one game or whatever it was, yeah. you know, it's you, you can't put everything into one game. But after watching what I watched earlier, really not, not surprised, of course. And it's good to see her bowl well and all. So I mentioned earlier she would be one who undoubtedly would have – Multiple titles if there was no hiatus of the PWA tour. For sure. Does a lot for bowling. She, I, I think she's just a great person all around. She's definitely one of the good ones. She's also a White Sox fan, so I got to <laughs> gotta rep, gotta rep that. Uh, I can't. I'm a Twins fan, so. We are rivals. Yeah. We are rivals. Folks, the voice you hear is Nick Pate. 2017 Intercollegiate Singles Champion on the men's side from Midland University. You graduated. Right? I did finally. When was uh when was the graduation? Uh May 13th. May 13th. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. It was just weird because I remember the first tournament this year. I walk into the center, and I know maybe 10 people because all the other people that I pull with now, they graduated last year. I'm sure all the coaches are happy that I'm gone. Yeah, I'm willing to bet that. <laughs> I think you created some headaches yeah. for a lot of teams and a lot of players. Chelsea Barr takes care of the spare bar, former collegiate player. Started her career at Wichita State, bowled at uh, Baker University in Kansas. Speaking of Wichita State, Sierra Kanemoto clean through five. Cheryl Daniels on a double. Kayla Pashina, she bowled collegiately at Nebraska. She's from Minnesota, I know. Her and her husband. And her, uh, her brother is very talented. Try to get him to come to Midland. Chose different paths, which is fine. Aaron's got front four. She's gonna make a charge this block. Haley Lundy from Canada. She's 
clean through a uh, four and a half. Here's Cheryl Daniels. He's got to push a little bit. The jinx. Just as I say it, <laughs> but it was indeed the old broadcast jinx there. My apologies, Haley. Good shot by Sierra. I'll tell you, Lee Jane Sin, this is uh, the most opens I've seen from her in yeah. literally, literally three weeks. Yeah. All right, Missy Parkin. And she's quietly having a pretty good season as well. This is about the halfway point. Yeah. To kind of be officially that that way once we get uh, through the players next week. And 10 pin for Brittany Smith. Someone looking at a ball change. I'm just the type of person that wants to help anyone that I can see. So sometimes I have to just bite my tongue and not say anything. Is it, is it hard? Um, like how was that growing up? I mean, you obviously, you guys have a very bowling family. Yeah. So was it difficult in that in that sense? You know, sometimes when siblings and you get older, sometimes they you know may not want your help in certain situations. They're gonna want to do it themselves. Uh, was that like? My sister was definitely tough at times, but it changed when I went off to college and I got that collegiate experience, and then she trusted my abilities more but the older brother and younger sister sort of feud if you call it <laughs> definitely got in the way at times it happens yeah well i certainly fully expect to see at some point if she chooses to do that she's already bowled a few like the queens for example yeah. Lauren. um make her way out on tour. Mentioned uh, Deandra Asbaby shot 298. And check that video out. It is on the PWBA Facebook page. Got the crew here too. Yeah. So that would have been cool. Yeah. Man in Jersey to see that. <laughs> Good shot there from Parkin. About halfway home. Here on 35 and 36. 53 and 34 now into the seventh frame after that spare from Sierra Kanemoto. Brad uh, Little John is listening. First of all, hello, Brad. Appreciate you tuning in. Um, Cheryl did not sing. I mentioned that Cheryl sings, yeah. and so he asked that she sing during the tournament like she did during previous stops back in the oh. day. So Could have had her sing the national anthem. She did not. She did not sing the national anthem this this week. that sometimes you know obviously when when there are a few more strikes being thrown the pace seems to be a little quicker of course and was that a seven pin yeah, there like seven. like seven for a McCarthy in the sixth frame but uh, is there anything other than you know more strikes being thrown in certain situations that you've seen or maybe experienced in in uh, your your times of bowling uh, definitely more strikes makes the pace go faster, but another thing is going when it's your turn. Definitely speeds it up instead of taking, you know, 
the extra 30 <laughs> seconds or whatever. They add up. Yeah, they do. Oh my. That was a hard seven pin. Wow. Well, that's the worst thing you want to see when you're trying to get through a game, going through a few struggles. Yeah. And then the seven pin does that to you. She's been bowling next to Aaron all day, so I've watched her pretty much all morning to a little bit this afternoon. She's been struggling with pin carry, wrap 10, seven pins like that. Brittany touches the 10 pin but doesn't fall. We watched uh, Leanne, I believe it was Leanne Holsenberg. You know, had the wrap 10, but, but something clipped the 10. It was going to fall over to the left, and then it kind of got a kick and stood back up and, and moved to the next spot. So it was kind of in between, like, the 9 and the 10 spot. It was weird. A shot there for Cheryl. Nice double. She definitely throws it very well. Cheryl owns a pro shop or runs a pro shop here, too, in, uh, in the area. Okay. So she knows her stuff. Yes. Absolutely. It's fair about Brittany. Brittany clean. Take switching it. balls. Good. Sin minus 38 again, which is odd, yeah, to see at this point, especially considering her first two weeks. One week, uh, in Wichita, she dominated match play 200 over. Oof. Hot. Is that with bonus? No, oh wow, she shot 14 11. back on the strike train. It's a good game for her. And another four pin there for Missy. She's close. Alluded to it uh, a little bit earlier, early this morning as Missy joined us. Nice spare for Kayla. But uh, Missy and her husband Drew expecting. Yep. So congratulations to the Parkin family. Taken care of. McCarthy striking in the seventh. Chelsea Barr. Spare in the eighth frame. Andrea Bear to our left. She's got a pretty good game going. I think she was near the, uh, the cut uh, a little bit earlier. Not struggling here. This block, speaking of Andrea Bear. Just seeing lines she's playing. Like the old school fade. That sounded powerful. That was one of those that no pins that's, standing. That's pretty much what it's looked like for the, the last two <laughs> yeah. weeks. That that shot right there. And a very similar area yeah. too for Lee Jane. It looks like she just floats the ball and lets it roll into the pocket and see if they're shin, that's how she's going to destroy the pattern extremely well. What term did you just use? Shim? Yes. Shim. Hold. So for the, just in case the viewers may not know what yeah. that term means, kind of break that break that down uh, uh, in a simple, you know, simple way. It'd probably be hold. Uh, holds, hold its line. Lays off. It's got a bunch of meanings. Depends what term, but <laughs> lay off and hold are probably simpler terms. Then you create shim. Yes. Did she get another one? I believe so. Well, 
McCarthy. And closer to what it could be at least 250 at this point. Yeah. That was a pretty good shot. That was good. No four pin. <laughs> See where Missy is in the standings. Yeah, she's she struggled this morning with some ball reaction. I was watching her. Fucking minus 69. As you mentioned, struggled a little bit earlier. At, uh, 75 under. He came out shot 266 in round two, and has followed up, unfortunately, with 170, 170. When I was watching her, I was thinking of the ball that she would need but I didn't say anything because I obviously I don't talk to her on a level like that and then she comes out the second block and she pulls off the ball that I was thinking of and then she goes ahead and shoots 260 so my hypothesis proved to be correct in that instance well that's good it sounds like that's a sign of yeah. a knowing yeah. knowing bowling knowing what you're doing uh, B, I, I, I would believe that uh, you guys share some similarities in regards to uh, ball companies. Yeah. So you, that means also you know that yeah. you know the equipment yeah. as well. Let's see, repping the C300. Wearing one of my favorite jerseys of hers always kind of makes me feel that no matter what's happening, there's a beach somewhere <laughs> with palm trees and yeah. sun. There's my guy uh, Troy Fisher is watching. Troy is from Southern California. He's an avid viewer of Extra Frame. And uh, we were in Fountain Valley. He actually came up. I met him. He is was a he's a student essentially of Missy. Okay. Gets lessons from her, and so he came up to watch. But uh, so when I talk about palm trees and various items, he told me it was going to be in the, the mid 90s or something like that earlier in Southern California. <laughs> yeah, that's hot. But yeah, if there's a palm tree, I feel like it doesn't really matter. Although there's a few palm trees in Vegas, and that's it's hot. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. I'm not. I can say I'm not a fan of extreme hot. Me neither. I not a heat person. Grew up in Minnesota, so. That's true. Body is. Ooh. All right, temp in. What do we call that hit right there? It wasn't on camera. But when, what's that? Generally, the head pin that clips the, that clips the tin on what could be a wrap tin. Yeah, that was. I, late hit, late hit on the tin. I would say. Maybe we can coin our own phrase. We, we might have to. I need to. we got to research first because yeah. there's plenty of people who have done this <laughs> well before me or anyone else for that matter. Well, since we just saw Aaron do it, we could, we could use that as a verb. Like, could be just for her. Or we could say she McCarthy the 10 pennies. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to do that. All right, Daniels, Phil shot. All right, Cheryl, 204. She'll still rolling along here. Couple more games to go. She's in a very good position to bowl tomorrow. It definitely seems like the older generation. And this, I've just been watching week after week. They just know how to grind. Like, their spare shooting is phenomenal, which keeps them in it. But they don't shoot 170s. I think that is a very astute observation. Which is why they can be good for so long. It's an important tool. Obviously, spare shooting is you know, without a doubt, but the the word grind. I mean, it's a it's a it's a thing. It's like a noun. Yeah. It's, it's not in the dictionary. It is. Uh, good Let's look it up. That's right. I didn't think so. Generally, when you're grinding, it's you're doing something. But it could be like a noun because it's a yeah boom like that was a grind. There it is a noun a a crushing or 
grating sound or motion. It's a little different than what yeah. we're talking about. Oh, the five seven. The five slid over. It's at the four and a half spot. I miss it. Definitely wants to obviously make it here. She can shoot 203. She gets one, but in a game like this, we yeah. she left a couple four pins that really have uh, stopped some momentum in frame yeah. six and seven. Amber McCarthy, meanwhile, did strike in the eighth and the ninth. So she will be up in the tenth frame momentarily with a chance to shoot 279. Missy just missed it. Two oh two for Missy. I feel like that was one of those games that you threw it better than a two oh two. Absolutely. And those games are demoralizing is what they are. They just sixty for Chelsea Barr, one fifty seven for Kayla Pashina. All done on 33 and 34. Kanemoto shoots 184. Oh, late hit on the seven. You can see Aaron's ball off to the right on the extra frame. Caved in the pocket there for a strike. The break for Lee Jane Sin. I mean, if she strikes out, that's 180. That's a pretty good score for having 46 in the, was that the fourth. Yep. Megan Makunovic, 162. Saw her practicing last, last night. Oh. We'll attempt at it there from Haley Lundy. I'm going to say Brittany Smith is going to strike out in the 10th for 202. Okay. I like the confidence. Aaron's in the 270s. Nice game for Aaron McCarthy. There's that flat 10. I just think for this pattern, she might throw it a little too hard. It doesn't create enough angle. Shot by Brittany. Or she's playing too close of an angle at the wrong part of the lane. I feel like if she moved, if she wants to continue to that, she could probably bump left and, you know, roll over 19, 20, and have her break point be 12. See it roll in like that. 278 for. McCarthy and a 310 here for Brittany Smith. How important just briefly are uh, obviously, you know, angles and kind of quickly figuring out the way you, know, you need to get to the pocket, whether that's angles in front of you, too much angle, not enough as we were just talking about there, as you just mentioned. Uh, and, and all, of course, to see the ball go through the 1-3 or the 1-2 the right way. Uh, angles are definitely important. Um, honestly, it's pretty much your pin carry. Your, your angles kind of dictate your pin carry. If your angles are too open sometimes, you're going to flat tan your balls. Not storing enough energy. Um, and then if your angles on the patterns like this where your angles are too close, it, you get that over-under reaction, that wet dry is what we call it. So I, I'd say angles are pretty important. Like if Jane went to right there where Jacqueline Rhoda just went, I feel like she could start striking, get a ball that's not so shiny, so it you don't get that two-pin flat ten reaction. Speaking of Jacqueline Rhoda, as Nick just said, Jackie Rhoda. Christina Zerbinski, Sarah Minch, and Brittany Himmelreich now on 33 and 34. Rhoda qualified for the Intercollegiate Singles Championships this season. Of course, went on to be a semifinalist, main TV. Does she still bowl for Maryland Edition Shorts? She graduated. Uh, no, she was a sophomore, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. So youth is definitely in the, in the hands of, uh, excuse me, at Maryland Eastern Shore, Coach Bandy. Speaking of Maryland Eastern Shore, against Shina Sarouse last week. 
are qualifying for her first ever TV Finals PWB event. She went to Maryland Eastern Sh uh, Shore, excuse me, had a very, very, very good career. She she throws it really well. Rare miss there for Christina Zabinski, another Maryland Eastern Shore alum. Who also had a very, 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 very good career at UMES. Did Christina Bowl back in the th those dynasty days, if you call it, like when they won all their championships? Uh, I'm almost positive that she did do that. I think she was on the team that won, uh, that did the. It was like back to back. I think it was yeah. like 2010, 2011, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yes, because. Uh, Almost positive. She also bowled all four years with Angie as well. Okay. Uh, Maria was on a couple of those teams yep. also. So, that, I mean, you talk about. It's a stacked team. And that's tough. Sarah Rhodes, C.T. Rockman, Jody Wester, and Katie Ann Sop Schroeder. We're a Nebraska player. Also from Minnesota, too. Also from Minnesota. Our guest in the booth is Nick Pate. Anyone uh, has any cool questions for Nick? Some that are, of course, bowling related. And G rated, if you will. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Feel free to uh, drop them on a uh, live now post. It's the live now post that says round two qualifying on Facebook. My sister just texted me. She wants me to give her a shout out. So I guess I gotta, Come on, Lauren. gotta give a shout out to Lauren. You can't be texting them. Yeah. Asking for shout outs, Lauren. I used to do it to Aaron all the time when she would commentate on this. <laughs> name drop me just randomly. And, and look where you <laughs> look, look where you are now. Yeah, I've gone to be known as Aaron's <laughs> friend to to my own name. You could be Lauren's brother. I'm definitely Lauren's older brother. I missed it. Hello to Yvonne Dunnett watching. I feel a big game for Jody Wessner here. player was in multiple halls of fame. Yeah. She's also someone, and I'm not sure many people may recognize it, but does have ties. She did compete prior to the hiatus uh, of the tour as well. I actually, there was like a throwback Thursday video that she was featured in. I think she Unfortunately, she didn't win. Uh, yeah, I think she took some, Yeah, doubles, yep. I remember that. That was certainly one of the cooler instances of being a part of this tour uh, is to kind of go back and, you know, take a look at certain events, certain shows, and realize that, oh, wow, you know, this is like Jody Wester, yeah. you know, from 1996. Well, at least we know Nick Pate uh, is on social media and paying yeah. attention to <laughs> PWBA social. Thanks, Nick. We should have a score update here momentarily. I want to take this time to thank all of our sponsors. Smithfield, Pepsi, GoBowling.com, Nationwide, 
and Cubica AMF. Well, your sponsorship, of course, Smithfield PWBA Tour Championship will take place September 3rd through the 6th. The Old Dominion Building at the Richmond International Raceway. So, I think that's really cool. It's a big deal this year. Yeah, it's a big deal every oh, year. Oh wow! Let me. That was an interesting 7-9. That. that was a terrible break, by yeah. the way. But uh, part of NASCAR, the NASCAR festivities and the race, essentially that weekend. So we've uh, had some cool things planned. Every week, essentially, players are on the road to Richmond. Yeah. Are they, uh, for the people that qualify, are they giving out, like, duffel bags with goodies inside or... Yes. So if you were, uh, well, you weren't here last last week. Oh, I saw the, I saw the pictures and. Yes. Each player that will, that ultimately qualifies for the event will receive uh, one of those swag bags. That's that's kind of cool. I like that. So it's uh, you know, obviously it's a nice gesture, of course, and yeah. you know it means something. That's, oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. This is it's our uh, says it's the season-ending event, and everything that happens during the season is really. A precursor to yeah. that event. Yeah. So it's at that point, it's those who have won a title, um, and then the rest of the field is made up for players who are, of course, highest on the PWBA points list. Of course, last year we had our we had the, the player of the year and the rookie of the year decided at that event. Yeah, which is exactly what you would like to have. Yeah. You know, make the, the, the bowling, of course, uh, decided at the end, basically. And, of course, Liz Johnson, two-time player of the year, reigning back-to-back -back is uh, at the moment. So I'd say she's a, she's she's a favorite at, yeah. this, at this present time. Uh, Rocio Verstrepo was the runner-up. She is still in the mix, obviously. We've got a long way to go. Oh, yeah. But uh, Diana Zabialova in that mix, too. Rookie of the year went to Wei Finn. She ended up winning it. Wei did uh, not only win the rookie of the year, took her two matches actually to win it. She bowled Jen Higgins, and it was, they were the top two. Yeah, the winner of that. Winner of that basically uh, uh, won it, although Wei had to win one more match, and oh, she okay. did. She okay. defeated Danielle McEwen to essentially uh, lock it up, and then didn't stop there. <laughs> yeah. She continued on and ended up defeating her Singapore teammate, Sherry Tan, in the championship final. So it was a great event. Big thanks to Uptown Alley and everyone at, uh, in the Midlothian, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia area. Katie Ann just nine pinned after leaving the 7 9. That's. Back to back, bad breaks. That tells me that her ball's not stopping in the correct spot. Hmm. Either I would, first I would move left. I like to do one thing at a time, so I'm gonna move left, and then if that doesn't work, then I'm probably gonna ball change. Okay. How confident do you have to be? We, we see it all the time where, and it depends on the situation, but to make um, either approach moves, moves with your eyes, move with your feet, both, or, you know, ball changes. Like, is there a, do you have, like, a checklist? I mean, is it, like, boom, boom, boom? You kind of just went, went through it a little yeah. bit. But. I think there's a small checklist. Like, if you're obviously going through the face and you're going to move, if you're nine pinning, which is, is heavy is what it is, then you're going to move, and if – it because if you move left and you miss the pocket, then you either move too far left or the ball is just not reading correctly. So then you make that ball change. And you have to do it confidently, especially out here, because if you're not confident in all the moves you have to make, then honestly you shouldn't be out here. That's a fair point. It does take a certain uh, amount of. it if you will yeah but at the same time it shouldn't be it should be kind of seamless where you know and you, you shouldn't be afraid to be able to make that move yeah. even if it doesn't work yeah 
because that's that's part of it too. Sometimes it won't. Good shot by that Jody. works. Yeah. Wessner, Sarah Rhodes, C.T. Rockman, Katie Ann Top Schroeder, Christina Zerbinski, Sarah Minch, Jackie Rhoda, and Brittany Himmelreich. Erica Heibel has gone double spared, three bagger. She's paired to our left on 31 and 32. Let's take a look at our standings after 10 games. Another new leader. It is Diana Zabialova. She she's good. I'm going to pick her for player of the year. That's not a bad pick. I, she won the Queens, and she's it's not a bad pick, she is man. definitely on a roll. All right, you're in the books for Diana Z. Diana. Okay. Keep a running total here. Um, she has gone 225, 224, 253, 256. Round two. That's, that's pretty good. Plus 260. Second, Josie Barnes, plus 241. Josie just continuing on. Finish the day, or uh, excuse me, finish round one earlier with 278, 240, 190, 217, 209. Still at plus 241. Deandra Asbady, she shot 298, game three of round two here this evening. She's at plus 240. Angie Ramirez Perea is fourth at plus 215. Verity Crawley is fifth at plus 208. Sandra Gungora is sixth at plus 180. C.T. Rockman is seventh at plus 178. Jen Higgins is eighth at plus 173. Juliana Franco who will make her TV debut in Wichita as plus 166. And Natasha Roslin is tenth at plus 164. Aaron's at 15th after that 270 game. And there she is indeed at 15th. Talk about being out of the cut to 31st and now to 15th. I think for someone like Aaron, you don't even look at 32nd. You look at 12th, to be completely honest, because of her talent level. So she's 20 pins out of, out of that. So Well said. Strepo is the cut number right now for the cashers round at plus 43. Shannon Pulhowski, 33rd. Brittany Ferrara, who is uh, plus 36. Player at uh, Notre Dame College of Ohio. Bowling well and got a chance to for some extended bowling. At least Bolton is 35th at plus 20. Summer Jasmine would be the final cashers. Uh, cut today at plus 18. Again, this update is after 10 games. To check that out and more, be sure to visit pwba.com slash live. Get uh, your round one, round two qualifying results. We'll have, of course, everything you need tomorrow. Your roster is there if you're curious, along with uh, the pairing sheet to see where players are. And, of course, the oil pattern. How many people are close? Plus right now is... 37. Okay. 37 people and uh, 36 cashing spots essentially. So Danielle McEwen's plus 84 on his block. She's, she's making a run. Thirty-eighth. I'll tell you. Uh, tell you a quick story. The viewers should probably hurt me to tell it a lot. Uh, but if you recall, last year's Wichita Open. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember that. I, I, don't I, watch, it. I watch extra frame. I watch it all. I, she averaged like 260 or whatever it was. She it went was, 800, 800. It was great. 750 to make it. Yeah. 820 yeah. to open up match play. 823. Was she the leader, for the determined leader? On the TV show? or? Yes. She, That's... So he went from being out of match play. That's crazy. To the number one seed. So her six game total was what, 15, 1570? 750? Uh, for those, for, yeah, that, for that, that three? Yes. yes. That, that's missing like. I mean, literally, 753, last three games yeah. of cash around to make it. She was 12th. Yeah. She finished or uh, ended up 12th and then 820 to get to first, basically. That's that's missing like less than ten times in six games. Then 
threw in another 276 in game four. Yeah. Just just for game four. It was amazing. That is one of my top moments so far. Yeah. Of, of watching live competition on the PWA tour. By far. I saw something her significant other did pretty impressive last week. What did he do? He went front 20. On <laughs> their, the first game, it was Marshall, uh, Dick Allen, and Jake Peters. And Dick Allen was low on that pair. It was threesomes at 276. Marshall shot 300. Wow. And then Jake Peters shot 279. They shot eight. Was that 855? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you get some of the best bowlers in the world on a pattern like that, you're going to see a lot of strikes. This is at uh, in Jonesboro or Lubbock? Lubbock. Okay. In Jonesboro. Whew, if you shot 2-0, two, two you were that was impressive. <laughs> yeah, because I think in Jonesboro, cut for top for match play it was plus 10 for, what is it, 8 and 13 games, six, 14 games, one of those two. And then you get to Lubbock, and top 12 was plus 332. I made the cut, but I was plus 83, and I was 108 pins back of 16th. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Well, in regard to the significant other, we would certainly put uh, Danielle and Marshall in the uh, kind of that upper echelon category of yeah. mixed doubles couples so you would not want to face. No, I'm pretty sure they bowl the Lucy together. Yeah, I mean, if they don't, <laughs> sounds wrong. There's a good shot. Looks like she moved in a little deeper. Ball faced up better. All right, almost halfway home through five games. Jerrica Heibel still striking. Ninth frame shot. Oh, she a ten. Really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, in my view, I can only see the, a pin go around the ten, which would look to be a wrap ten. Let's see where Jerrica is in the standings. She was close. Jerrica minus 19 and 49. Again, cut is plus 43. Again, to get a check, plus 18. So she's still got some. Uh, got 240 out there. She can get one. there. Certainly, the ninth frame didn't, didn't help. Hemmelreich has been uh, pretty good today. Yeah. 20th and plus 106. This pattern definitely favors her style of bowling. Asia. The World Ranking Masters in 2009 won the Malaysian Open at age 15. Wow. Nice shot by Sarah. So Bench, formerly of Grandview University. She actually went to Midland before Grandview. Wow, look at that nugget of yeah. information. Back in the day. That's why you're aboard, Nick. Yeah. That was a dynamite drop in, Monty. Nice shot by Jody. Getting closer and closer, further and further uh, into this block. Any differences or similarities, for that matter, that 
You see where players are playing, what the lanes are doing from round one about this time until now. Uh, I definitely see them in the same part of the lane. I, I, I said it earlier, but I think they definitely got easier, which is weird because the more you lay a pattern down, the flatter it gets and the more it hooks. But honestly, I don't think that was the case because the cut's been going up a decent amount. My plus 30 has been blown out of the water. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, 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 it still looks good. Yeah. But today is the day where it, it doesn't look like it's going to go yeah. backwards for a game. Strike for Himmelreich. Let's just cook it. That was like the 710 that got taken on by one pin. One more, she'll be in the 220s. Double. And Erica Heibel ends up shooting 230. That's pretty good. 234. Definitely in the position she was in. She was minus a couple. Well, that's a big score with one game left. Gives her, gives her a chance. That's all you really can ask for is a chance. A pin by Kelly. It's wiggling. She had five in a row. You no, know, I don't recall either speaking about or mentioning Kelly's name. There she is, 28 plus 50. Nothing special. Plus, what is it, 32 this morning and 18. And shot by Brittany. But Kelly always finds a way. She's just who she is competitive nature. Yeah, watching Kelly compete weekly is always, uh, it's a plus for anyone. Oh, yeah. Because you, you learn a lot, and not even about bowling, really. You can just kind of see it all in Kelly, the type of person she is, the oh, yeah. competitor, the athlete. Uh, and then you can get into some of the things where some of the things she has, has gone through in the last year. And a really tough ankle injury. Yeah. For most uh, the first half of the, excuse me, the second half, I should yeah. say, of the uh, of last season. I think it started in like Lincoln or something. Yeah, it was about that, yeah. about that time. And um, I remember, I think it was it Detroit. She might have taken this week off. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah. She took this tournament off to to rehabilitate, uh, to try to be ready for the players, which of course is the following week, and it is again this season. But. Uh, you know, prior to this season, she had 10 championship round appearances. Six in the relaunch year, 2015. Yep. Made TV four times last year. Could not come away with the win. Um, and so she will be on the PWBA Fountain Valley Open on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, she's the top seed, so we encourage you to watch that, DVR it. Uh, if you are bowling summer league, for example, on a Tuesday night, make sure you set your DVR, of course, and uh, I think you will enjoy that show. Yeah, for sure. All right, Zerbinski. Struggling a little bit here. Yeah, going to shoot 140. 
see on your screen there talking with Dale Ballard. Mr. John is here working. He is working on behalf of Storm Roto this week. Nice shot by Katie. She figured it out. Front left through a four bagger. Is it is it what uh, oh, wow. you, you talked about? Look at that leave on 33. Two, four, what is that, two, four, five, seven, ten? That is correct. If my uh, old teammate Casey Max is watching, he left that at sectionals two years ago. And, uh, yeah, we made it by three pins that year, so. Was it was it late in the block? Did it was in position rounds. Oh, wow. It was the last game, and the we were sitting comfortably gonna get it. Oh. Good shot at it from Jackie. Run well, that's just a terrible break in a tenth frame. We were comfortably in like third or fourth going into that and then we uh, we were shooting one eighties, one nineties, but the the fifth seed was close enough and they were shooting two twenties and their last game they shot two fifty. Wow. So yeah, and then he left that and then and it was the, he was a leadoff, so it was the sixth frame. So luckily we had the other teammates to pick him up. But I definitely appreciate that I gave him a shout out for that lead. So I watch extra frame quite often. I was watching the senior U.S. Open that's going on at the same time. It is. And then I saw a snippet that uh, Tom Clark posted of Brian Voss and Pete Weber that I thought was very, very interesting. Uh, it was a reaction that Brian Voss did. Have you seen it? I have not. Uh, Pete threw a Brooklyn mm -hmm. and tripped a six. Honestly, at that caliber of level, that's going to irritate the opponent. Brian Voss reacted by throwing his rosin bag. Yeah, and then he wiped his ball and threw his towel and then proceeded to nine pin. Well, that's just a lot of bad, right? It is. But sometimes bowling needs that. Yeah, it, it's, uh, where did you see it? I'll have to go uh, watch it. The Tom, Tom Clark uh, commissioner page that he okay. has on Facebook. Okay. It's a little snippet. People were talking about it. I, I think it's awesome. I, I think it's funny. Well, we've seen some things like that before, oh, yeah, and so it's not like a, yeah, you know, like a, like like a negative, no, so to speak. It's just, you know, that's just real life. That's just bowling reaction, just right? They are people too. Like. I can feel his pain. I mean, we've all been there. Oh yeah. You know, in the heat of the moment. Tight match. Yeah. Yada yada. You know. Especially for the U.S. Open. It happens. What what uh, was the finals? Uh, match play. Match play. I think Pete had the front. That was four front six for Pete. So. Got the seven nine out for two thirty. All right, Brittany Himmelright continuing to add to her total. That will be plus uh, 140. Um, I think she was 106 up. Yeah. Very nice. I keep up. I'm I just got. Yeah, I keep up with everything. Now, we, we talked about Katie Ann earlier when she left at the few uh, nine pins, for example. Did she kind of do exactly what you were thinking that she might do or would need to do in regards to her moves? Yeah, she definitely bumped in a little left, and she she moved her feet and her break point. So now her break point's on the tracer, maybe a little right of it, which is 10 down lane, which is where you want to be by now, I think, especially with this pattern being a little softer, as you say, or as you could say. Mm -hmm. We could have more open angles and get it back from places that you couldn't in previous weeks. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt that uh, anyone who has watched the tour so far this season would say that 
Uh, this this will probably be the most playable pattern. Yeah, and the ratio is still 2.5 to 1, which if you say that's softer than previous weeks, it only proves that they've been hard with ratios at 1 point. I think last week was 1.45. And, and it's no doubt about it. I mean, it's, you know, that's, we've been talking about it and uh, forcing players to kind of, you know, almost not necessarily give a full reevaluation of their game per se, but there may be some areas that are uh, are are being uh, there's a light being shined on yeah. certain parts of someone's games, for example, and those are the things that people are wanting to work on during the week, improve upon. Spare shooting being one of them for sure. Yeah. Because when there's not a lot of strikes thrown, when you can catch a double, but you know you're clean through eight frames. That's a help there. Well, Road shoots 181, Western 191. Top to 14, and CT Rockman shoots 225. Nice clean game for CT. Yeah. All nines. Nines are strikes. That's what you want. All right. We will end the day with uh, Josie Barnes, Natalie Cortez, Christine Johnson, and uh, Leslie Brown. So for Nick, we just uh, we just we just made your night. Did we? I, I didn't plan it this way. I really, I really didn't. I just said, hey, you know what? I think game three would be good this yeah. afternoon or this evening. <laughs> but yet we got to see Aaron. I would have stayed in all twelve games <laughs> today. Well, the, the, listen, the mental notes are being taken. Yeah. In my head. Obviously, whenever there's a an opportunity, if it presents itself. I certainly will not uh, turn down. Some good assistance. It's good conversation. And I think it's a little different insight, too. Absolutely. Go on. I think it's important to uh, try to get a little, a little extra for the viewers in the sense where, you know, we could have – different people in that chair, for example, and each one of you would bring something different. So oh, you yeah. bowl collegiately, um, you know, bowling PBA events, for example. So you've got a, uh, you know, you've got an outlook. We could have, obviously, a player, which we've had yeah. several times, and we get their insight from what they're seeing in the respective players. Uh, I try to talk to at least one or two reps a week to yeah. to give the, the knowledge of what their eyes are, are seeing and what they're um, providing in regards to uh, advice, knowledge, etc., to their respective players. So. All right, Cortez, she had a good week uh, in Detroit last season as well. Yeah, she made the group step ladder, finished uh, tied for seventh. In fact, she lost to Brittany Smith oh. in uh, kind of the semifinals of uh, their respective group step ladder. It was a very low scoring match, if I recall correctly. I thought the pattern last year was like 1-1, one one, maybe 1.2 or something. They were brutally hard. Because I think Josie made that step ladder. That sounds about right, too. I think so. And, uh, it was Tanya. Yeah. I came up with all bowling. I remember it. Back in my head. Wow. This guy. So you're yeah. going to be the person <laughs> 10 years from now who's going to remember kind of almost verbatim yeah. what happened today. Yeah. This is the first time in x frame booth, so I'll probably remember that. Well, you know what? Well, I'm honored. <laughs> I'm honored to now be uh, officially in the – the brain of Nick Payne. <laughs> well, you already were when you did that article. Well, in all seriousness, I was going to say, in all seriousness, um, you know, this all started when he said, hey, well, you know, Nick Payne is, um, or Nick and Lauren Payne. I'll tell you exactly how it started last year, uh, how I even got the idea to write the story that we wrote. And I saw, I think it, it was a, probably a tweet. And Lauren was a freshman at this point. Yep. And she had won the Rookie of the Year. Yeah. In the NTCA, I think it was, you know, Division two, three, whatever it was. Yeah. And I said, Pate. And I knew Nick Pate, like, yeah. just from, you know, Midland. And 
But like it's, you know, could it be, right? You yeah. know, so you do a little digging and say, oh, wow, they're, they're related. They're brother yeah. and sister. And so, you know, at that point, we want to write something cool and get a couple stories from uh, ITCs last year. Yeah. And now what was news to me was that you had another sibling and, and Lawrence twin, and that was kind of what put it over the top. Like, yeah. oh, this is an excellent story. Like people should And that we're know all at them. different schools, different yeah. types of schools. I mean, that's you don't really see that. No. Every day. And you know, three different schools, you know, parents have got to figure out where they're gonna go support what yeah. weekend. Uh, and of course it worked out obviously this year at ITC, so yeah. all of you were there. Which was great. So um, and then it, you know, when you win things like the player of the year Yeah. You know, most, most valuable player. You know, people kind of want to talk to you, so <laughs> we keep talking to you. And then you see the, you know, we see each other all the time now. It's, it's yeah. like after ITCs, I've seen like 25 <laughs> times. Well, this actually being in the booth helps me with my interview skills and whatnot. Well, it, there, there's always a learning process in everything you do. And so this but will not be the last time you'll do this. Be, be, a, you know, yeah. whether it's me or someone else, someone's yeah. going to ask you to, you know, either talk, be on camera, whatever it is. So it can help you get more comfortable. This this person here <laughs> likes to uh, borrow our electricity yeah. here at the extra frame booth. Um, someone borrowed our electricity down there without asking, but it's okay. It's you know, trying to be helpful when we can. Yeah, going back to the interview thing, I've had some bad history with some interviews. Okay. It all, it all started with Mr. Flanagan at the, IV, or the Fusion Realtors in Iowa. I think I was a freshman freshman in college, and I made the stepladder show. And he had an interview, and it was just not not good. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> it's on YouTube. Were you being interviewed? Yeah, right before the the stepladder match. Okay. And I go back and watch and just laugh at, wow, you really were not good at those. But well, you, you <laughs> keep that. Yeah. Because, uh, you know. It's a even, good laugh. Hey, well, that too. But, you know, you can go back and say, wow, you know, I've really come a long way <laughs> in regards to my interview skills or interviewee skills. It's the same thing on the other side of the microphone. I mean, I can go back and. Yeah. Listen to some stuff from college, and I'll go. That's hilarious. Yeah. It's so bad. Like, but it's necessary. Yeah, start somewhere. Wow. Jellamar Beasley is starting somewhere. She's very far right. She's left-handed. Hooking the lane. Beasley, along with uh, Natalie Goodman, Rachel Albright on the pair, along with Donna Zeller. Rachel, very good player from the Ursula College. Great. Greatest ball rep ever. Walking by. Rob G. This is game six, folks. Round two, final game of the day. Game 12 of 12. Joined in the booth by Nick Pate. That is the voice you have heard for about, what, uh, the last three games. Or so, gotten some good insights, good info from Nick. His time at uh, Midland. It's, uh, so far, some times at, uh, at some professional events on, on the PBA Tour as well and some of his insights of what he's seeing and uh, kind of breaking it down for you here at the Greater Detroit Open. Liana Franco, well we, you mentioned it, uh, it has gone by pretty darn quick here. Yeah, nine o'clock now and it started at six. This game probably averaging what, 30 minutes a game? Yeah, four and a pair. But again, the, the you know, yeah. few more strikes being thrown. Oh, yeah. This morning, this, this morning's block took four hours, four-ish hours, I think. Second time by Maria. 
Yeah, another good example of someone having a, a very good season already. Uh, one TV yeah. appearance, uh, six events, missed the cut once, but she has made match play in the other five. That's pretty good. And so that keeps you, up, of course, top of the leaderboard in regards to the points list. Because, you know, from really at this point, um, it, it, it's, of course, it starts from the, from the first week of the tour, but like we say, about halfway. And so, really, the points list starts to become uh, very important. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about, obviously, postseason awards, but, but mainly because of the tour championship at the end. And there's only two ways to get there. You either have to win, yeah. and if you don't win, you must have, uh, or excuse me, enough competition points yeah. to be there. So, How many events are there? 12 or is it 14? There are 14 total. Uh, 13 uh, in regards to uh, stats concern, but we do uh, there is a title offer. So, for example, the Lucy that does that doesn't count, does it? It doesn't count in regards to stats, but it okay. does count yeah. as a title. So, wow. yeah, real it, yeah, that was a bucket right there, caved it in. So, realistically, if you don't win a title, you have three spots right or is it two if it's top 16 right top 16 if there's 14 events 13 count each one gets a title well there's 14 including the tour championship so if we not include that uh so there's 13 13 and yeah so they got three spots to battle for well, that's if you have multiple winners. Oh, okay, yeah, that helps too. Yeah, if you've got, uh, I mean, you could you could have the way it's going so far. No one has won multiple times yeah. yet, so we could have thirteen uh, different winners, and then there would be there, there would be those three yeah. spots. Last year, which is very uncommon, right? So yeah, you know, last year we had a couple players win multiple times, and that obviously adds more drops down, uh, more spots in the in the points list that way. Shot by Josie. Yep. Would it be weird to have just 13 different winners? A little bit. It, it, I think it would be unexpected oh, yeah. in a sense. But at the same time, I think it might be the coolest thing ever that a yeah. different person or a different yeah. player won each week. I think Aaron missed tour championships by one spot last year. So she did. She's and absolutely. It's another thing that came down to really the U.S. Women's Open at that point. Yeah. Oh, right around it. Oh. Nice shot at it from Rachel Albright. It's your former All-American at Ursuline. To see her uh, competing at this level. Average 202 collegiately. That's pretty good. 30.71, five on the average differential, which is uh, that's always. Yeah, that's what they look at the most. Then I look at the field average along with that. go after 11 games here is your results and updated standings brought to you by Smithfield Diana Zavialaba first plus 295 just continuing to uh, wow that was 200 over almost for five games it's 193 to this round Plus 295 overall. DeAndre Asbady is second at plus 265. Josie Ernest Barnes is third at plus 220. Jen Higgins is fourth, or should be tied for fourth. Jen Higgins and CT Rockman at plus 203. Angie Ramirez Perea is sixth at plus 194. Juliana Franco is seventh at plus 188. Verity Crawley 
is eighth at plus 182. Liz Johnson is ninth at plus 179. Sandra Gangora is 10th at plus 176. And skip down to 32nd. Where it is Leanne Holsenberg at plus 52. She's one pair off, all right? Four and five strikes. So, all right, so looking good for Leanne. And Brittany Smith is 33rd at plus 49. Strepo took a dip after shooting 205. She's at plus 48. And 34th, Brittany Ferraro, the amateur, plus 38 and 35th. And Lise Bolton right now holding on to the final casher spot at plus 18. Kuhowski hovering around the number at uh, in 31st at plus 54. Summer Jasmine is 30th at plus 57. Who else is here? Uh oh, Cheryl Daniels, SBC Hall of Famer. Shot uh, 168. Game 11 and game 5 here in round number 2. She is plus 81. So, so Cheryl doesn't. Uh, Away any sticks here. She can remain in the cut and get some extended bowling tomorrow. Another amateur, Brandy Remy from uh, she's from the area, Livonia, Michigan. She is 22nd, plus 96. A shot there from Natalie Cortez, Carolyn Dorn Ballard, Sydney Brummett, Daria Paiuk from Poland has the front seven. And she is plus 79 and 26. So oh, yeah. looking like she's going to be in. Good shape as well. Kelly Kulik shot 259. Game five to move to plus 109. Aaron McCarthy, 17th, plus 115. Jet Julio Chepik, Gary McConnell, Brittany Hemmelwright, Shai Donald Hamidi, Natasha Roslin, all in the top 18. And check your results out, pwba.com slash live. Leanne with another strike. Olsenberg again off camera. Uh, the first pair to be done is going to be 21 and 22, looks like. Liliana Franco shot 207. Maria Jose Rodriguez shot 179. It was plus 101. She will lose 21. I think she'll still be okay. Yeah, looks at the moment. Missy Clue who bowled very well at the Queens. Yeah, she did. She's 42nd at plus one. Only looks like only got to 201. That will not be enough this week unless something crazy yeah. happens here in this final game. Of Daria Pike. I mentioned she's got the front seven. She is up now in the eighth frame. It looks to be on lane 28 and front eight. Ten in the fifth. I think that's the first non nine Josie's left that I've seen. It's five. Church for Josie. Isn't Jellinor close? Sidetracked. Oh. Jomar struggling this week. Ah, uh, was it last week? I'm pretty sure last week she did make the cashers round. It snuck in at 32nd. It might have been Wichita. We'll get it mixed up at this point. Jomar is such a talent. 
talented lefty. Yeah. She won that women's regional back at the World Series two years ago, I think. Yep. Olsenberg again on the way. They shot there from Albright. Stones at seven. Barnes gets one to go in the ninth. Well, could it be Diana Zabialova? At the front ten for Daria Paiuk. Figuring out some camera work for Daria. She has front 10. Try and catch it live. Shot of Daria when it's time. Play in, nine counting. I would just safe bet that she'll pick this up. Yeah, they're getting to the point where they were tricky. I think they stayed pretty decent for a game longer than this morning. Like Josie shot, she five counted and then probably moved left and it right. pressed the head pin. Her, her physical game is certainly one. Um, I mean, it's one of the best yeah. uh, on 
on tour. For her, we had a good combo this morning. And basically, kind of resulted in uh, just talking about the experience, gaining more experience. Let's go to Daria now. As she has the front nine. Looking on 27 and 28, I believe. She liked it. Shocked front 10, but uh, just gaining the experience and you know, watching other players when they're struggling. You know, sometimes you can't tell if they're struggling, they, they yeah, very calm still, and kind of keeping the anxiety levels down, keep the heart rate down so bad habits won't creep up. Well, it's just eliminating all those variables that can affect your score. is Daria Pipe. If you are just joining us here, it's round two of qualifying. Final game of the day of the evening. Game 12, front 10. Here is the 11th shot for Daria. Oh, wow. Splits the 17. Gets him to fall one to the left, of course, and the other to the right. How about that? That's what Power Revolutions does for you. Wow. say she gets it. This will be just the second game of the season. Paiuk. Go! She got him to fall. I saw 4-8-10 there for half a second. So we've had 297, 298, and finally a 300 game. So congratulations to Daria. Pull that footer at 200 over. Let us find out. Plus, uh, yeah, plus 179. Depending on what happens, she could be in the top 10. My guess is top 15. No doubt about that. Definitely a confidence booster too. Yeah, I think yeah, exactly. I, you know, to everything she talked about this morning and. She said practice generally goes well for her. Like she yeah. has a good look most of the time during the practice session, but it's everything kind of after that. <laughs> yeah, this week uh, plus 79 was could be out of the cup. Yeah. Last week it led around. Yeah, for sure. Leslie Brown, 152. Natalie Cortese shoots 213. Christine Johnson shoots 221. Josie Ernest Barn shoots 192. Josie Goldwell got to 212 over, I think. That's a good day. That is. Especially when you go, she only went plus 40 the second block. Was the number? I think she's safe, even if she misses this. But spare hair never hurt anyone. She's at 220 currently, which would be plus 72. It. So she'll be in the 230s. Uh, 
players in the in the mix were Brittany Smith. Shannon Pluhowski was uh, 31st. Smith was 33rd. So Jasmine was plus 57. Kayla Bandy was plus 60. Final shots coming up on 35-36. Still several pairs on going. Looks like the middle portion of the house is finishing first. I'll tell you what, it's been really awesome to see all these fans come out and watch. They have bleachers set up in here and they've been full majority of the day. It's been a good day. Of course, the, the nightcap generally brings about more fans, obviously, yeah. as they get off work, out of school, etc. And uh, it certainly has been packed. I think tomorrow should be Bowl. packed, too, since it's Saturday, which is definitely what you want. We know the our online viewership has been packed as well. appreciate everyone tuning in, as always. It's Angela Mar. Watch out on the field. Nonetheless, 209, 47 for Natalie Goodman. Donna Zeller shoots 168, and Rachel Albright shoots, I believe that was 228. That was 222. Could be. It probably was, and you're correct. So 222 for Albright. And so with no immediate bowling going around, around us that we can get to you. Uh, that will do it for us here on Extra Frame this evening. First of all, I want to thank Nick Pate for joining me for uh, the last four games. Yeah. I hope it was enjoyable for you. It was. You. I learned you, a lot. Good. I hope the viewers uh, enjoyed your commentary and your thoughts, uh, of course, as well. I know some people tell me that they like me. They like to listen, but... It never hurts to yeah. uh, to add some additional knowledge yeah. to the booth, which is what I like to do when we can. Uh, so definitely want to thank Nick. and want to thank all of the viewers. Uh, don't forget to check the updated results. I imagine somewhere within the next 10 to 15 minutes, bowling would be complete and maybe another 20 to 25. Uh, we'll have a, a cut number for you as well so hang tight um i may keep it keep it going for you i probably will for those who who like to know the cut number immediately I'll keep that live for you but we'll keep it low um and ongoing so for nick pate again appreciate it sir thank you appreciate it i'll be here tomorrow so if you need okay extra insight gotcha uh my name is emil williams jr we say uh, so long for now Again, pwba.com for all of your results. Of course, the quickest way, pwba.com slash live. You've been watching the Greater Detroit Open from Super Bowl in Canton, Michigan. This is Bowl TV on Extra Frame.
to the PWPA Greater Detroit Open. Ladies, please tally up those score sheets and turn them into the tournament office behind lanes five and six. We will then announce the top 32 who will advance to tomorrow's cashers round. So everybody hang tight and we'll get that announcement as soon as we can.
there, plus 238, Sitchin Rockman. And rounding out your top four, plus 230, is Jen Higgins. Your 32nd and final qualifier for tomorrow's cashier's round at plus 52, Linda Barnes. Linda Barnes is your final cut for tomorrow's cashier's round starting at 8.30. Your low to cash is Lee Jane Sin at plus 32. Plus 32 is the low to cash. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming out today to watch the best women bowlers in the world. We hope to see you tomorrow for the conclusion of the PWBA Greater Detroit Open. Just a reminder, tomorrow's round of 32 will begin at 8.30 followed by the top 12 match play finalists at 1 o'clock. Ladies, roll call at 8 a.m. in the locker room. Have a good night. Be safe. We'll see you tomorrow. Brandy Remy, if you are still in the building, please come to the front counter. Brandy Remy, if you are in the building, please come to the front counter. Attention, it's going to be last call for Laneside Grill and Pizzeria. Again, last call for Laneside Grill and Pizzeria. If you like any food or beverages, please give it this time. That'll be closing in five minutes.